special interests. Uh, the first uh, cab off the rank today is, uh, not surprisingly, the Honourable Member for Rosevears. <coughs> Thanks, Mr President. And uh, I'm going to raise again the subject of uh, sugar-sweetened drinks and junk food in hospitals and the issues around awareness of patient care and quality assurance. And uh, I've previously brought to the attention of this House my experience of meeting uh, Launceston orthopaedic surgeon uh, Gary Fetke, and he's campaigning on the perils of uh, sugar and junk food, particularly in the hospital environment. His argument has always been that hospitals are at the coalface and should provide leadership on preventative health. And uh, as I've said recently, to the delight of the uh, member for Windermere, it's not long ago that uh, hospital auxiliaries used to sell cigarettes directly to the patients on the wards. And once the perils of tobacco were identified, that practice obviously ceased. <laughs> Dr Fetke and many others now argue that we should be applying the same practice to sugar and junk food in view of the obesity and diabetes epidemic that's challenging our society. In 2013, Mr President, you may recall, we passed a motion in favour of reviewing the hospital food policy and, in particular, to adopt a reduction in junk food availability. But, unfortunately, nothing has changed. Now, since we passed that motion in 2013, New Zealand hospitals adopted a ban, hello, on sugar-sweetened beverages and reducing the sale of junk food. Now, it's not about creating a nanny state in Tasmania, but all Australian states, bar Tasmania, have followed suit. Even Queensland hospitals, which is the home of sugar production, adopted that policy in August. And now, while I'm on the subject, Dr Gary Fetke. Oh, oh, I'm not going to tell you the story of meeting him for the first time. But I want to talk about the action against him by the Australian Health Practitioners Regulation Agency, APRA, for giving dietary advice, Mr President. And I point out that this is a nonsense to say that doctors shouldn't give advice on diet. I mean, any GP assessing a patient with a high blood pressure problem would be negligent in not giving advice about excessive salt consumption. Doctors are meant to be <laughs> advocates uh, oh, no, <laughs> Member of Windermere, I wasn't looking at you when I said that, but if the cap fits, wear it. I can tell by your chuckling. The Member for Derwent was. <laughs> Everybody else was. OK. But, as I say, uh, doctors are meant to be advocates of public health, Mr President, and it remains a concern that Dr Fetke's situation developed when his recommendations on reducing junk food in hospitals well, being supported by this House in 2013, he received precious little support from the Tasmanian Health Service on this issue. He met with opposition from the hospital dietitians and specifically their parent body, the Dietitians Association of Australia. That body wrote repeatedly to the Launceston General Hospital, effectively demanding his silencing on giving nutritional advice. In 2014, he was reported anonymously to the Tasmanian Medical Board for giving the advice of cutting back on sugar to his patients. The subsequent two and a half year investigation by the Tasmanian Medical Board, that investigation, determined that orthopaedic surgeons should not be giving dietary advice. They've only done six years at medical school. They've only done about 12 years in, in um, training. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> so the decision for Dr Fetke under national law was lifelong and non-appealable. Is that justice? Even if his advice was shown to be best practice, Dr Fecky and many supporters in the wider community were outraged, Mr President, by that decision. His questioning of the decision was not addressed by APRA, and he took his case to the National Health Ombudsman. Nearly two years of review by the Ombudsman found flaws in the judgment process, and his case was reviewed by an independent medical board. In a six-week turnaround, all findings against Dr Fetke were retracted and a formal apology given by APRA. Dr Fetke has requested the same formal acknowledgement of actions and an apology from the Tasmanian Health Service on multiple occasions, 
as he was trying to clear his name and to get on with his work. An outside federal body has now determined that the whole issue was unfounded and unsubstantiated. Dr Fesky is he's still looking for reform in our dietary guidelines. He's looking at the Australian Health Practitioners Regulation Agency for a review process. And of course, he's concerned about the health of the wider community. But unfortunately, Mr President, he is doing this now from outside the Tasmanian Public Health Service. Our Tasmanian public hospitals should come into line with practices of all other states with regards to the removal of sugar-sweetened beverages and junk food. <coughs> Tasmania has poor health outcomes. Preventative health should make us leaders in Australia, not followers. Here, here.